Hi, I'm Justin Schmidt with K-12 Maker at MIT Edgerton Center. I'm going to show you how to make a really easy project in Vector and get it ready to export to a laser cutter. So first thing we want to do is get to Vector.com and say Use Online. And if we haven't signed in before, it should bring us right into the editor. So first thing I want to do is make sure that my page is set up correctly. So I'm going to come over here on the left and find the Pages button. And now that I'm in here, I can make a couple changes. So first thing I want to do is give my project a name. You always put your name on your paper, right? So let's say Justin's dog tag. Okay. Next thing I want to do is set my units. So right now this is set to pixels. Pixels are awesome for doing something for the internet, but it's not so great if you want to do something for the real world. So we want to set this to something we can measure with a ruler. So I'm going to go ahead and say inches. And the next thing I want to do is set the width and height for my project. So this set to, you know, just about like, I don't know, 6.9, something, something, something. I'm going to just make this uh, 12 inches. So let's say I have a 12 inch piece of acrylic that I'm going to put in my laser cutter and I want to know how much room I have to play with. Uh, if I wanted, I could do the size of my laser cutter's bed or I could do the size of whatever material I have or something that's just a little bit bigger than my project. Doesn't quite matter what I put here. Um, here is a little lock that will let me change these values independently of each other. When they're locked, anything I do to this one happens to this one. When they're unlocked, I could then say, let's say 20 by 12, which is close to the uh, bed size on a Glowforge. Okay. Um, I'm going to put this actually down to like, let's just do like four inches by four inches, just so it's not too big and crazy to see over here. Okay, last thing I want to talk about before I get out of here is our DPI setting. So this is just like the kind of the quality of the finished product. So I'm going to say uh, 150. That's the lower setting for print quality. So let's close this pane by hitting the X there. I'm going to click this little button for auto fit. And that's going to bring me nice and tight in on the page here. Now that my page is set up, I can start designing. So I'm going to come to my toolbar. I'm going to go down to shapes and I'm going to grab a circle. And I'm just going to click somewhere on my page to drop that circle in. Okay. And then I can move it around. I'll get these little guides that will tell me when it's centered, which is kind of neat. Now let's just drop it in the middle. Next thing I'm going to do is come over here to the right and look for dimensions and my width and my height setting. So let's set the width to 1.5. I want my dog tag to be one and a half inches around. So that's all set. Next thing I need to do is add a feature up here as a hook with a hole in it that I can put a key ring on. So I'm just gonna grab another circle, keep this really simple, and resize that to be exactly half an inch. So I'll just do 0.5. Now, if I wanted, I could make it taller than it is wide by using this little unlock button, but I wanna keep everything nice and neat and circle uh, instead of making you know, ovals or other odd shapes here. So let's grab this circle and move it over to the pink one. So the orange circle is now snapping to the pink one with these blue guides. So if I leave it right here, it's centered on the pink circle its middle is sitting on the path of the pink circle. So that's pretty good. Um, I don't really like the way it looks though. If I zoom in here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I don't like that this curves in before it hits the uh, edge of the pink circle. I actually wanna move this down a little bit. So I'm just gonna use my keyboard to nudge it down until the center handles there are a little bit past the path of the pink circle. Okay, that just looks a little better to me. Okay, so now that I have this where I want it, I have to add one more feature. I need a hole cut out of this. So to make that hole, I'm gonna grab, you guessed it, another circle, click to drop it anywhere on my page, close my shapes pane, and I'm gonna adjust the size. This one I'm gonna make a quarter inch. So I'm gonna do 0.25 for a quarter inch. All right, and then I'm gonna grab this and bring it over and you'll see it'll snap right to the middle of that orange circle. Now I can start combining these shapes to make my final product. So we're going to take the first circle, click on it, hold down shift, click on the second circle. And then you'll notice now that I have more than one object selected, I get these extra controls up here. So these will let me unite, subtract, intersect, exclude, 
or divide. And they do basically what the pictures look like. So for this operation, I'm going to do unite. And that's going to make this into one solid shape. If I double click, you can see the path handles. So my laser cutter is going to read this and cut all along this outside path as one shape. Okay, so that's what I wanted. That looks really good. The next operation I have to do is take this purple circle and cut it out of the orange circle. So I click on the purple, hold down shift, click on the orange, and this time I'm going to use the subtract operation. Okay, double click, and now you can see we have a compound path. So we have the outside shape and the inside shape. But when I move them around, they're just one path together. Um, so that is what we want for laser cutting, okay? Next thing I want to do, go to my text, type in my dog's name, and let's make this a different font. I can click up here on text, and I'll get some fonts I can pick. Uh, let's go with Oldenburg. And then I could make the font size bigger here, or I can just click on the text and drag this shape to make the font uh, larger that way, okay? I'm done with my design, but I still have a couple steps before I can send this to a laser cutter. First thing I wanna do is take the part that's gonna be cut and make sure that it's set to the right line width and that there's no fill. So I'm gonna come over to the right, I'm gonna remove the fill, that way it won't get engraved, okay? And then I'm gonna come down to border and I'm gonna make sure this is checked off and I'm gonna put in a size here. So let's do 0 0.001 to start. So your laser cutter may see this thickness and decide that that is a hairline and that that should be cut. You may have to try just zero or 0 0.0001 inches. Um, start with 0 0.001 because it's visible in vector if you go to send this over and it doesn't cut, just come and adjust this and try again. Uh, the other thing that might matter for your laser cutter is the color of the line. So right now it's set to this red color, but is it really red, red? No, it's a little bit off. You can see it's not right up in the corner. So I could drag this up to the corner, but even then, if I look at the hex code here, it's not quite pure red. You would think this is pure red. It's not either. So the easiest way to fix this is to just type in the hex code for red, and that would be FF0000, okay? That will get you the reddest that red can be um, for this line. So that's all set for my cut. Now my text is still a text object. I could edit this, I could change the font, I can do things like that. I need to convert this to a path. To do that in vector, what I'm gonna do is right click, and scroll down in this list until I find outline text. Click outline text and it will convert the text to a path. How do I know that it worked? If I double click, I can now see the path outlines uh, and it's no longer a text item that I can edit. I also lose the uh, text options up here on the right. So that will do it. I'm ready to export this uh, for laser cutting. So to export, I'm gonna come up to the right and I'm gonna click on the export button right here. I'm gonna make sure that this is set to an SVG, and then I'm gonna hit download. Okay, and that's gonna download my SVG that I can then open in whatever program I need to run my laser cutter. So I hope this is helpful. Uh, go forth and make, and have fun with Vector.